Hey everybody, this is Maxine Taylor with another edition of my Trumpology Report. And I thought I would bring to you the latest um, additions to the Trump staff. Uh, as of the last few days, uh, John F. Kelly, who is Chief of Staff, and Christopher Ray, who is the new FBI Director. We do not have birth times for either one of these gentlemen. However, uh, many of you know how filled with information and informative the solar chart is. Uh, I can't go into a forecast on advancement in career simply because we don't have an ascendant or a midheaven. However, I will share with you the information in these solar charts and I think you're going to find them very, very interesting. Um, if you are watching my regular forecasts on you and your sign, you know that I'm using the solar chart and it's very accurate and very helpful. If you do not have a copy of your birth chart, your real sure enough birth chart, go to my website, MaxineTaylor.com. Send me your birth data, the month, day, and year, the city and state where you were born, and the exact birth time. And I would be happy to send you at no cost a copy of your own birth chart. Okay. Also on my YouTube channel, I have my Astrology 101 TV shows, which will show you how to interpret your chart. So it's a great deal. The price is right. So let's start with John Kelly, the new chief of staff. Here is his solar chart. And we're just going to, I'm just going to start where my eye goes first. And I always tell my astrology students, it's a circle. So whatever house, whatever area of life catches your eye, start with that because you're going to return to your starting point ultimately. So the, uh, Oh, let me give you the birth date of, that I have for those of you who are following. Um, May 11th, 1950, um, in Boston, Massachusetts. Again, no birth time available. But as you look at this chart, first of all, we see that uh, John Kelly has both Jupiter and the moon in the 11th house. We know that the, the moon is in Pisces. We do not know what degree. John, of course, is a Taurus with a Pisces moon, uh, a lovely sextile. Uh, Jupiter in the 11th house brings many acquaintances, many friends. Most importantly, it brings with it a very strong humanitarian side. Um, now, of course, he has a military background and it's, I think it's very helpful to have a, a humanitarian side to you. Jupiter in Pisces, four of Pisces, um, quite lovely. His friendship circle continues to expand. Now, the moon, of course, is the message from our mother as to where to look for our emotional fulfillment and security. Doesn't mean we'll find it. She just told us where to look for it. And so with a Pisces moon in the 11th, she said, your friends, look to your friends. With it, uh, planets in the 11th house of the solar chart, John Kelly is a disguised Aquarian, meaning he marches to his own drumbeat. He believes in what is good for the whole, is good for the individual. And uh, those of you with any 11th house or prominent Uranus or a strong um, Aquarius in your chart, whether sun, moon, ascendant, or midheaven, ask yourselves at least once a week, am I crazy or is the world crazy? Um, the 11th house person is very, very different. The Pisces moon can make him very idealistic, which will soften that very matter of fact Taurus, Sun and Mercury. So it's a, it's a lovely balance. Okay, let's look at his 12th house. He has the North Node in the 12th house. This make, well, first of all, the 12th house planets indicate a disguised Pisces, ties in with his Pisces moon likes to work behind the scenes, like to, likes to feel that he is uh, needed and wanted. 12th house planets can make us, uh, we can feel 
sorrow and sadness very, very easily. Uh, thank goodness he has th those two strong Taurus planets so that he is strong. He is tough, but there is a lot of um, wishful thinking perhaps, as well as divine inspiration with 12th house planets. With the North Node in the 12th, he needs, it says his greatest fulfillment will be, and success will be working behind the scenes. And here he's thrown into the limelight. How interesting. His Venus is in six Aries in the 12th house. And so his concept of love is so beautiful and so perhaps even spiritual, much more beautiful than the earth can provide. I'm not saying he doesn't love his loved ones, but he does have this uh, great need for solitude, privacy, and um, the great appreciation of love. Now, he's got Venus and Aries, which means he's gonna jump in feet first and, and hit the ground running which is awesome. Now moving ahead then, he's got the sun and Mercury in the first house. Anytime you do a solar chart, that person is a disguised Aries because the sun is the ego and Aries is the me first part of the chart. So with the sun uh, in Taurus, very, very practical, very logical. Mercury is our conscious mind. It too is in the first house. First house. This is very normal with a solar chart because we do not know which house the sun is actually in without the birth time. So uh, Taurus is very practical, very logical. They take things one step at a time. It's got to be useful. Um, and what's so interesting is they do have a sweet tooth. If you have Taurus in your chart, you, you've got a sweet tooth. Whether you quench it with chocolate or alcohol, of course, is up to you. Um, he has Mercury in Taurus, so he thinks very practically, very logically, step by step by step. He's not going to go off half cock. Excellent placement. Uranus in two degrees of Cancer in his third house. Uranus is the great awakener. Uh, it's the rebel. It's it's the the one who says, "I'm marching to my own drumbeat." So. With Uranus in the third, he's a disguised Gemini. And Uranus being the psychic planet, he can blurt things out. And they are probably true, but they're very shocking. So there is a very unpredictable, a very strong unpredictability in the way he expresses himself. This is really cool. He has Pluto, all or nothing Pluto, in his fourth house. Uh, Pluto rules the matriarch in the family. And it's Pluto rules power and control. So he wants that in his home and family. But there is a matriarch there already doing it, whether she's living or not. I hope this makes sense to you. It's fascinating. Astrology is truly fascinating. Ah, he has Saturn and Mars in his... Oh, I forgot to mention. Pluto in that fourth house makes him a disguised Cancerian. So home and family, all or nothing for him. Now, the fifth house makes him a disguised Leo with Saturn and Mars in his fifth. Fifth, Saturn is in 12 Virgo, Mars is in 22 Virgo. The fifth house rules fun and games, it rules children, it rules all creativity. With Saturn there, he is going to hold his emotions in check. He's going to hold his self-expression in check because this was told to him by at least one authority figure. Saturn. And if he will respond to his ability, he will take it magnificently. My sense is that since he's in the military, he has learned to accept responsibility. My definition of responsibility, as I said, is respond to your ability. But there can be uh, a certain fear that he had about um, having children because of the responsibility involved with them. And the oldest child would be old head on young shoulders. With Mars in the fifth house in Virgo, he would throw himself into uh, the child rearing, into having children. So he would like fun and games with Mars there, but controlled, a little more conservative. That's that fifth house. And look at this, finally, the, the sixth house. It's really beautiful. 
With the South Node in the sixth house, he has mastered the art of serving. He's mastered the art of getting it done by doing it himself. And so with the North Node and the South Node, both in houses of service, he wants to serve. Neptune adds to that. Neptune in his sixth house uh, says, I want to be needed. Um, he has a great deal of idealism about how he wants to serve. Um, and with a Pisces moon, of course, that adds to it. Yes, it can be make-believe. Yes, it can be escape. Uh, but on its highest level, it is divine inspiration about how everything can be wonderful. And you might say that's very interesting. He's in the military or was in the military. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Neptune in the sixth house indicates um, a slow leak when it comes to his personal energy. Um, and so he's going to need to replenish energy, either by spending less time at work, although working for the White House, I can't imagine having less time. Um, but the, I, I do think that the, the feeling of being fulfilled by serving fills him up. So that's what we have on John Kelly. Now, let me go over here and let's look at Christopher Ray, the new FBI director. A lot of people said, when I told them I was doing the new FBI director, they said, I didn't even know we had one. Um, I don't know if it didn't get the fanfare that uh, John Kelly did, but we have a new FBI director. And he, just like Comey, is a Sagittarian, which tells us that this is a man of truth. He's going to tell the truth. And his statement, I think, to his staff um, validated, validates that. So let's talk about... Christopher Ray's chart. Again, a solar chart. We don't know the ascendant or midheaven. But he is in he was born, hang on, I'll give it to you. December 17th, 1966, in New York City. No birth time, but he's in that karmic group that has the Uranus Pluto conjunction. A lot of you have that. Um, I, I seem to resonate very well with that karmic group. I'm not in it. I'm way out of it. I'm a lot older than that. But I do resonate with those of you in your 50s. Um, so let's just start here with the 10th house of his public image and his career. He has Pluto in 20 Virgo and Uranus in 24 Virgo. Uranus says, I'm going to rebel. I'm going to do my own thing. And Pluto says, wait a minute. Hold it. Don't let it rip. It's all or nothing. You know what happens when you let it rip. It's all or nothing. And so Pluto can hold Uranus in check, and that deals with his public image. He's a disguised Capricorn with planets in the 10th house, and so he is the leader there. But he's going to lead um, unconventionally with Uranus there, and there is going to be an all or nothing showdown um, anytime Pluto gets triggered, primarily by a full moon or one of the transiting planets, a conjunction is the most powerful aspect we have. And so once a year, when the Sun and Mercury and Venus are all in Virgo, that is triggered very strongly. So let's see what happens in a couple of months, okay? He does have Mars in seven of Libra in his 11th house, and this makes him a disguised Aquarian. Now, I got to tell you, his moon is in Aquarius. So again, this is a person just like John Kelly, who marches to his own drumbeat. Uh, they, those of you who have the sun, the moon, or the ascendant in Aquarius, uh, you are so unique and so fascinating to me. Aquarius rules astrology, so it, it makes sense, of course. But no two Aquarians are alike. Uh, 
there is the very, very traditional, almost Capricornian Aquarian, the one who was ruled by Saturn. And then there's the one riding his Harley off into the sunset saying, I'm here to cause trouble and bust loose and do my thing my way. And uh, what happens is Aquarians love groups, but they're unique individuals. They march to their own drummer. So Aquarius moon and now Mars in the 11th house in seven of Libra. His friends come first to him. His groups come first to him. He'll fight with them or for them. That's what Mars indicates there. And so that amplifies the humanitarian side of him. Now look at his 12th house. Um, just as we did with uh, John Kelly, he has his south node in 15 Scorpio and his Neptune conjunct the south node in 23 Scorpio. Um, John Kelly has south node in six Libra 44 and Neptune in 15 Libra. So they are conjunct. They both have the south node conjunct Neptune. So what this says is there is a lot of wishful thinking and idealism and Neptune is martyrdom. And so since the South Node is conjunct Neptune in a past life, these people, these men may have martyred themselves for a, core, for a cause in which they believe. And we may see them doing it now. Do you have Neptune conjunct the South Node? That's you too. Very noble. Okay, Neptune in the south, uh, Neptune in the 12th house is, uh, this can be a daydreamer, an idealist, a visionary. And the south node says that he has had privacy and solitude in past lives. He wants, to, uh, he, his greatest fulfillment will come from getting down in the trenches and getting busy with that north node in Taurus in the sixth house. So both uh, John Kelly and Christopher Ray want to be needed, want to serve. Um, they're both humanitarians and have a, a very strong uh, idealistic, idealistic streak in them, uh, which can be remarkably helpful. And I don't mean, you know, go daydreaming or anything like that. These are people then who are open to divine inspiration. Look at your Neptune. Where is it in your chart? That's where you either escape or find your dream come true. All right, look at the first house again. No birth time, so the sun and Mercury are both in the first house, making him a disguised Aries. Um, and all of us in our solar charts have the sun or the sun and Mercury or even more planets in the first house. So we are all disguised Aries saying, me first. That's how earthlings are. Uh, until they master that and move beyond. Okay, so he thinks about uh, himself, but he has Mercury in Sag. And this is, uh, he thinks about truth, he thinks about concepts, he thinks about principles, and that's how he'll express himself. The sun is in 25 Sagittarius, so Mercury is not conjunct the sun, which means he has objectivity. If Mercury and the Sun are within 10 degrees of each other, they're conjunct and that uh, the, the brightness of the Sun can blind your Mercury, your thinking. Interesting. Now, if there are planets in between, that helps the objectivity. So he is uh, a man of truth, a, a, a man of honor. He has Venus in Capricorn in the second house. So he's a disguised Taurus with Venus in the second house. Uh, Venus in Capricorn, Venus is love, wherever it is in our chart, uh, that's what we love. It's the lesser benefic, it brings blessings, which is just wonderful. In Capricorn, he can earn his money through traditional means, um, and government work, of course, ties in perfectly with Capricorn. So does real estate, but he's in the government, so we'll, we'll go with that. Um, and with Venus there, he's able to make money. Isn't that lovely? Now, the moon in Aquarius, the true humanitarian, who says, am I crazy or is the world crazy? Um, it's in his third house, making him a disguised Gemini. And so he will be uh, speaking intuitively. 
Some people might say emotionally, but not with Aquarius there. Aquarius is an air sign. It's intellectual. It's artistic. It's humane. So um, he will be a visionary seeing the far horizon. He has Saturn in 22 Pisces in his fourth house of his solar chart, uh, fourth house of home, family, and real estate. And with, Cap uh, with Saturn there, it's in Pisces. So it's like a Saturn-Neptune conjunction. Yes, I'm strict. No, I'm a dreamer. Um, I, I want to lead. Oh, I want to serve. You see the picture. Um, now, his mother's message with the moon in his third house is to uh, look to your ideas as a friend, as a humanitarian, and that will fulfill your security need. Um, Saturn is the authority figure, the older authority figure or figures in his life. And wherever Saturn is, is where you were taught to respond to your abilities. So at home, he's going to be the boss. He's going to be in command. That's fine. We talked about the North Node, wanting to serve, wanting to work, wanting to be needed. And the last planet, and that makes him a disguised Virgo. The last planet is Jupiter in the ninth house, which makes him a disguised Sagittarius. Oh, but he's not disguised. He is a Sag with Mercury in Sag. So he has Jupiter in, in Leo, which is in mutual reception with the sun in Sagittarius. I'm going to, and when, when we have mutual receptions, two planets are involved. Each one is in the other side. So you interpret them exactly as they fall in the chart, and then you mentally switch places with them. It is so enlightening. Go to your own chart and see if that isn't true for you. I have a couple of them. They're really interesting. Okay, it, it's another dimension of interpretation. Jupiter is truth. It's the greater benefic. It's the one that brings all kinds of blessings. It expands wherever it is. In the ninth house, it's your vision of your of the world, your principles, your belief systems, um, travel. Oh yes, long distance travel, definitely. Higher education. With Jupiter in the ninth house, this is a man of truth and principle. Well, he's already a Sagittarian with Mercury in Sag, so it's a double whammy. Now, let's switch places mentally with Jupiter and the sun. The sun in the ninth house says the center of his life is truth. And dealing with people from other countries, traveling, opening his horizons to see options that most people don't. He is very, very philosophical. That's the Sagittarian. Continuing with a mutual reception, Jupiter is in Sagittarius then uh, by mutual reception in his first house. And so he will be optimistic. Uh, his personality is expansive. There is a happiness about him, which is quite lovely. Now, he does have a Saturn Sun square. I, I finished the mutual reception. He has a Sun Saturn square, which means there's a, a part of him that's going to build a wall around himself. He got that from the male authority figures in his life. Um, so he's no pushover. So those are the latest uh, additions to Trump's uh, employees. Um, stay tuned. When I started my Trumpology report, I had no idea I was going to be doing so many charts, uh, and particularly with, with people being hired and then fired and then all of that going on. It's a little hard to keep track of everything. I hope I'm helping. I hope I'm giving you what you, what you need to keep track of all of the players. Uh, so, till we meet again, whenever that may be, this is Maxine Taylor saying, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. May the stars shine brightly on our world and on the United States of America. Peace out.